In this video, we are going to cover a very simple optimization example with Nash Trans Solution 200. My name is Christian Aparicio. My contact email is here at the bottom right hand corner of the screen. So if you have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to send me a message here with your optimization question. Now, this is one of the most basic optimization examples for Nash Trans Solution 200. Uh, you may have already gone through a lot of material on optimization, but for those who are new to this, optimization is the process of finding a minima or a maxima for a given function. So here in this example, we are going to be taking the surface that you see here. It's defined by y squared plus y2 squared, and we are going to start at this green point of 3 comma 4. The optimizer is designed to find a minimum or maximum. In this case, we want to find the minimum for this given surface. So if you want to follow along with this one example, feel free to click in the video description below. You'll find a link to this uh, starting file. This starting file is what you need to perform this uh, optimization example. So the first thing you want to do is open the web app and click on the size web app. Uh, again, if you would like access to this web app, my contact information is here. I will leave it here at the bottom right hand uh, corner of the screen. Now let's get started with this example. Let's go ahead and upload the DAT. Uh, you may have a BDF file. Let's go ahead and select that file and upload it to the web app. Now. What we want to do first for this example is define our so-called objective function. The objective function is the function that we want to find an optimum for. In this case, we want to find uh, the minimum. So by the end of the video, we should expect the following. Uh, here you can see in orange, this is the optimization path Nashtran takes to find the optimum. Here towards the end, we see that the optimum is, I believe, at a value of 0, 0. So it's been a while since I've done this, so bear with me while I look at this. So let's go ahead and study this. And now let's start with the procedure. So here I've uploaded the file. Let's go to the objective section. And let's switch to the equation objective. This is where I can specify my objective equation. So here it's y1 squared plus y2 squared. And when you do that here on the right hand side of the screen, all the Nastran entries you need are automatically created for you. Here, since we're using y1 and y2, this goes ahead and automatically generates the design variables for us. So here, if you go back to the variable section, if you scroll down uh, to this section, adjust design variables, this is where you can say, uh, the starting point for y1 is 3 and the starting point for y2 is 4. If we look back at the graph, this is our starting point, 3 comma 4. So that would be this green point that we've just defined. So, so far we've defined the objective equation, so y1 squared plus y2 squared. We've defined our y1 and y2 variables, and we've also gone ahead and defined our starting point or initial values of 3 comma 4. Now, before we can perform the optimization, there's one thing we have to do. We have to simply select a dummy property. So here in step two, we're just going to select the area as a property. Uh, keep in mind, since the objective is in terms of Y1 and Y2, the optimizer will only modify Y1 and Y2. Uh, this other design variable we just created for the area, X1, nothing will happen there. So let's go ahead and go to the exporter and download or click on option one. This is going to download a zip file. Uh, you might get prompted if you want to confirm the download. Let's go ahead and confirm keep. Let's go ahead and extract this file. After this extraction is complete, we'll go ahead and start Nastran. And just to reiterate, this is what we expect. We expect the optimizer to start at a value of 3 comma 4. So here, let me see if uh, I can rotate this graph. We're going to start at a value of 3 comma 4. That's the initial point for y1 and y2. The optimizer is going to go towards the minimum of the surface, ultimately landing at the final value of 3 comma 4. So let's go ahead and see if the extraction is finished. 
So the zip file is completely extracted. Let's go ahead and double click this shortcut. Uh, this will go ahead and automatically start NASTRAM. It will automatically give me updates as to uh, where the optimization is. So here we'll see in a moment that we should be towards the end of convergence. After the optimization is complete, it will go ahead and automatically plot the results for you. So now let's go ahead and look at and see what happened. Uh, this, or rather, if we look back at the original plot, at 3 comma 4, the value of the objective function is 25. So here we see that it's 3 comma 4, and then the value of the function is 25. This is the same value we see here in the objective plot. So we start at an objective of 25. The next value is 6.25. Let's go ahead and look at the original surface plot. So here, the next value, and bear with me, this is, when you plot three graphs with this uh, plotting tool, it's sort of challenging to go in and select uh, the surface plot. So let me see if I can work with this a little. Oh, this might be better. So here we can see that the next value is 1.5 comma 2 with the surface value of 6.25. So this matches what we have in the objective function. And then after that, we have a value of 1.56. So if you look back in the web app, we have 6.25 here and then 1.56 here and so on and so on. So you see that uh, the optimizer has done what we just saw in the surface plot a moment ago. It started at a value of 25 and it slowly went down to the minimum where it should be zero or a value very close to zero. So here we have uh, two micro. So now let's talk about the normalized constraints. Uh, so here you can see the constraints, each one, each value rather for each design cycle is NA. This is indication that an unconstrained optimization example was performed. Now, what does that mean? That means that we impose no constraints on this example. Uh, once you start introducing constraints, and this could be a, a displacement constraint, uh, a stress constraint, that's when you're going to see the so-called constraint optimization, and I'll cover that in a future video. But in this case, uh, we're just going and uh, creating a unconstrained optimization example. So now let's go ahead and minimize this and go back here. Now, the third plot is the design variables. Uh, remember that the objective function was in terms of y1 and y2. So it is expected that those two variables would see some sort of change. And that's because the sensitivity is actually non-zero. X1, on the other hand, since that value or that variable is not related to the objective, there is no sensitivity. Hence, there's no change in the X1 design variable. So here, let's go ahead and turn off X1. And let's look at design variables at Y1 and Y2. Here, Y1 starts at a value of 3 and y2 starts at a value of 4. Again, this is the starting point that we had in the surface plot. By the end, we see that both values basically reach a value of 0. But here, since our lower bound was 0 0.001, that's where the optimization uh, stopped. So here, if we look at, let's see if I can plot this. If we zoom in, we should be able to see surface plot here uh, I think I know what's going on there we go uh, so here you can see those are very very small values close to zero here that's is using a, a nano and that's because of the numbering in the plot now that's the end of this example again this is an unconstrained optimization example it's unconstrained because one the normalized constraints there are no constraints, hence we have NA here. So the the objective, or rather the uh, the optimizer, was free to find the the minimum. So now what's going to happen in the next tutorial? This is where 
we are going to introduce a so-called constraint. Uh, so stay with me. Uh, I'll cover that in the next video.